Hi there, my name is Nick. This is the continuation of my story from when I found a lump in my breast. So previously in the last video, if you haven't already seen, let's kind of catch up to what happened. I had a biopsy on the site. I had an ultrasound on the site. The biopsy showed that it was a fibroadenoma. Fast forward, we just were gonna watch it to see, you know, sometimes those can go away on their own. Not typical in women over the age of 40, which is what I am, 43. Following that, we had a mammogram, my annual mammogram. It had grown. Um, for me, it became uncomfortable. It became painful. So I had made a decision that I wanted to get it removed. Went to a surgery consultation. Prior to scheduling my surgery, my doctor decided we should do an MRI. To get a better picture of things that were going on, it was recommended that I have an MRI. So in the last video, I had my MRI and I got my MRI results. And the MRI came back and showed an additional lump, which was kind of devastating to me because this was like, oh my gosh, not another one. Like it was rough enough for the first one. So then finding out that there was another one, even though I can't feel it, it's just the fact that it's there. They wanna do a biopsy and ultrasound of the new lump. So that's like the next step in this process. So now we're going to pick up where it's actually time for me to get the second biopsy. Stay tuned. So it is the night before my second biopsy and um, I'm trying to not be in my head. I've been trying not to think about it, try not to be worried, try not to stress out about it. Um, and I've actually been doing a pretty good job. But now that the time is ticking down, I hope I can just get a good night's sleep. Um, I feel a little bit anxious, but um, hopefully... Hopefully I can just get off to sleep and, you know, wake up and just go do what we need to do tomorrow. So, <sighs> hopefully also it's a piece of cake like the other, one, the other one because the first one that I got, it wasn't bad at all. It wasn't really painful. Um, so, I'm praying that it'll be the same for this one. So. We'll see. The thing is, is, I have no idea where this lump is in my boob. I've been fishing for it. I cannot find it. So, uh, yeah, I don't. We'll, we'll just see. We'll see what happens. So here's the update. Um, I actually only ended up getting an ultrasound. I didn't get a biopsy today. The um, first they had a hard time finding what they saw on the MRI on the ultrasound. See, the thing about my breasts is I have a lot of cysts. So I have fibrocystic breasts. So cysts are kind of like everywhere. So I saw what it looked what it looked like on the MRI because I was trying to understand like where it was. So, for example, if the one is right here, the other one is like right here. So, um, I'm gonna go home and see if I can try to fill it. But yeah, she looked at it. First, the ultrasound tech had a hard time trying to find it. So she called in a radiologist. The radiologist came, she found it. I think she found it. I don't know if they, was there, if they were, she, she seemed pretty confident that she found it. But um, so she was like, we can either do the do the biopsy today if you want to, or we can just monitor it in six months and see if anything's changed and then do a biopsy then. She was like, we can do a biopsy whenever you want. It was really just up to me. To me, it was just a lot. I'm already stressed out about this. So it was just like, oh, what do I do? Do I do it? Do I not do it? I don't know. So I opted to just wait for six months. I'm so emotional. <sighs> this is so much. 
I opted to just wait six months and get it done uh, and see what happens in six months and then maybe get it done. Um, but in the meantime, I'm still going to get the larger one removed because when she was doing an ultrasound, it was hurting. I was just like, oh my gosh, this hurts. I'm like, yeah, this thing definitely needs to come out. I'm sick of it. When I lay down, like if I lay on my stomach or I lay on the side, it just, I could feel it. It's so uncomfortable. It's, it feels so unnatural and I just want it gone. So the next step would be to um, get it removed. So that's the update. Um, do you want to go ahead and schedule the surgery now? Yes, please. All right. So how soon do you want to do it? Monday, Tuesday, and Thursdays are her operate dates. Monday, Tuesdays, and Thursdays? Um, what's the soonest I can do it? Um, next week, probably. Okay. Monday, she's out Monday. I just remembered it. It's the 16th, though. Actually, no, you know what? Let me wait till after my birthday. My birthday is February 8th, so any day after that, preferably like a Thursday. Okay, so that's look. Do you want the 16th then? Is it next week or do you want the 9th? Let's do the 16th. Okay. And I'll get it scheduled and I'm gonna let me find your email to make sure I have the right email address for you, okay? And I'm gonna send you that information okay. when I get it scheduled of your arrival time. Surgery will be at the breast center at Northside. Oh, okay. And that's inside the women's center, atrium level. Okay. I will um send an email and it'll have your arrival times at the women's center and it also have a post op appointment scheduled. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Okay. What's happening? Hello? Hello, I'm calling from Northside Hospital. May I speak with Nicole? This is... Oh, hi. My name is Heidi. I'm with the anesthesia team. We wanted us to call you during this hour to do your assessment for your surgery. Is this still a good time? Yes, it is. All right, perfect. And so, is there any other doctors you normally see, or that's it? That's it. Okay. And she's the one who um, referred you to Dr. Simpson? Uh, well, I was ref kind of, sort of. I was referred when I got the biopsy by the, um, mm -hmm. at the, the, you know, when I went to Northside to get to the Women's Center to get the biopsy and ultrasound, then they referred me. Oh, okay, yes. Because I have here on the left side of your breast, they're going to remove something. Like, what did they see? A fibroadenoma. Oh, okay, so they're going to remove a fibroadenoma on left breast. Correct. Okay, gotcha. Okay, but you said all you had was a mammogram. This is the first time they're going to go in and... No, I had a biopsy. Okay, and, and so did it look abnormal then? Or they... It just keeps it growing. It's benign, but it keeps growing. So it's, it's like doubled in size since the first time it was biopsy to... This this is a year later, and the um, okay. ultrasound it was it was double. Oh, okay, because it keeps growing. Yeah, and it's painful for me. Oh, it causes pain. Yeah. Oh, good. Okay, gotcha. That's why they need to remove it. And who's going to be driving you to your procedure? Um, my son. And apart from this fibroadenoma on the left breast, any other breast disorders or any like um, uterine fibroids, ovarian cysts, or anything else that mm -hmm. we didn't talk about? No make sure that you bring with you these things um you're going to bring your license insurance card um and also just oh wait you said you didn't get anything physical like surgery paperwork so don't worry about that just bring your license and insurance so you're just going to show up on uh january the 30th and did they give you the time of when you need to arrive yet 8 a.m okay perfect yes that looks yes so it's 8 a.m. Thank you so much for your time. We're going to take very good care of you, okay? Thank you. All right, you're welcome. You have a great weekend. You bye too. Bye. bye. She was very nice. <sighs> Not much to see here. I just wanted to um, share my thoughts. I'm a little less than a week out from my surgery. 
It is Tuesday and my surgery is on Monday of next week. Um, I'm just waking up and I'm kind of feeling like I just want to ask my doctor some questions. I want to see if there's a possibility to, while she's already going to be in there, removing the original tumor, if they can remove the smaller one that they found on the MRI. Um, so I'm actually going to call and see. They're probably going to just call me back, but I'm going to just try to call and see what can be done. Or see if I can speak to my Thank doctor. Thank you for calling breast care specialist. It's breast care specialist, I'm going to have to call. I have to speak to my doctor, Dr. Simpson, about my upcoming surgery. One moment. Thank you. After the tone, please record your message. When finished, you may hang up to deliver the message or press pound for more options. Um, I have an upcoming surgery on Monday with Dr. Simpson, and I just wanted to ask some questions about um, the tumor that's being removed and the additional tumor that was seen on the MRI. Thanks. Maybe I should have tried the patient portal. I think I'm going to back follow up with a patient portal message, and uh, yeah, we'll see what happens there. Oh. Their um, patient portal doesn't allow you to send messages. Oh my gosh, it's so annoying. As somebody who works in healthcare IT, and I specifically work on my chart, the patient portal for the Epic software, and I know how <laughs> robust the system can be. I This is a non-Epic product, but I just be like, dang, the patient portal can be so helpful, but their patient portal is pretty, um, pretty pretty basic you can't really do much on here but okay well I'll just have to wait for somebody to call me back so probably tomorrow or the day after I hope somebody calls me back like I want to ask these questions before my surgery hi hey I just wanted to call and let you know our system has been down all day so we cannot get into any of our patients charts so it'll probably be tomorrow before I can look it up and get back with you have Dr. Simpson give you a call, okay? Okay, sounds good. Thanks for letting me know. Right. I just wanted to let you know. Yeah, no problem. I appreciate it. Thank you. No problem. Uh-huh. Bye. Okay. After the tone, please record your message. When finished, you may hang up to deliver the message or press pound for more options. Hi, my name is Nicole. I did call on Tuesday and someone had called me back to say that you all, you guys were having technical issues and that um, Dr. Simpson will call me back the next day which would have been yesterday um i haven't heard anything and i had some questions about my surgery that's on monday um i can be reached at area code thanks bye well it is the night before my surgery and um i'm actually feeling very anxious um i think what's got me let me just say this um I feel ill prepared as far as like my knowledge of like what's going on with the surgery tomorrow I know I actually got to watch the footage back because I know when I had my cons consultation for the surgery she kind of she was talking so fast and you know it's so hard to retain that information that's why I highly rec I highly recommend Whenever you're going to a doctor's appointment, if you're asking questions about stuff, um, to record it, because you're not always going to retain all of that information that they give you. Some doctors will just spew, 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 spew information. It'll be information overload, and you won't retain it. So I actually have to go back and look at that video to kind of hear what she said about the surgery. But I tried to make a call, as you all saw last week. I feel real anxious, and I'm trying to get myself together I didn't even really want to talk about it today because I don't want to get myself all worked up but as you all saw I tried to call because I wanted to ask her some questions like I wanted to ask her because when we did the consultation it was for the one lump that I already knew that I had 
it wasn't about the second one. The second one was found after I had that appointment with her. And after, you know, because after I had that appointment with her, we did an MRI. She just wanted to do an MRI to see, you know, if there was anything else going on. And that's how they found the second one. Um, and since we didn't do a biopsy, because my thought was like, why would I even do a biopsy? They can just take it out when I have surgery. Um, so I wanted to talk to her about that. Um, so that's why I was trying to call her. I wanted to be like, hey, um, can we just take the other lump out? And then you guys can test it to see, you know, what it is. And then I also wanted to ask, because I'm like, nobody went over with me, like what the recovery is going to be like. I know it's an outpatient procedure, but like, I didn't get all of those type of questions answered. So it just has me, it just, I, I just feel a little bit anxious. And also, I'm getting the surgery earlier than what I really wanted to get. I wanted to get it done after my birthday. So I'm getting the surgery done on July, July, January 30th. My birthday is February 8th. I wanted to get it done after the fact. So I didn't want to be in any pain or discomfort or, you know, let's just say, I don't want to say this, but if the news or the outcome of whatever happens is not that great, I just want to enjoy my birthday. I don't want this weight on me you know, beforehand, or it could be good news, you know, I, I don't know, but I just didn't want to think about it until after my birthday. But since I'm losing my job, that means I'm losing my benefits. So I was like, well, I need to get this done before the end of the month. So it's like, there's that too. I'm, I'm losing my job. Like the 31st is my last day. It really could have been Friday, but um, I'm getting, they said the 31st and I'm getting my two days of work. So I will still be on the clock tomorrow. Shh, don't tell nobody, but I will still be on the clock tomorrow, even though I'm having surgery. Hopefully I could be done with surgery by the time I actually start since I start on West Coast time. But anyhow, anyhow, so I'm feeling just a little bit overwhelmed. I don't really know how to feel. And then also it's like moments like these where I just really, 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 really wish I had my mom I mean I'm thankful that I do have my son that's gonna be with me but and I didn't even ask anybody to help me because I was thinking like I'll be okay but now in this moment I really wish I asked somebody to help me because I'm or I wish I had you know like one of my friends or somebody here with me or my cousin or somebody because I just feel really um overwhelmed so yeah my camera battery's about to die but uh I'm about to go, you know, cook some food and kind of prep some stuff so I can just have some stuff to eat for tomorrow and for the rest of the week. Just a little, little stuff. <sighs> That's your day before surgery update. Just pray for me. Oh, pray, pray for my overall health and my well-being, my mental health, everything, because it's it's a lot. It's a lot to go through. So I'm just trying to make myself some, a little bit of something. Um to have some snacks, some food, cause I can't imagine I'm gonna be eating a lot, but um, I'm making myself some spinach and artichoke dip. And you know what I actually think would be perfect with this? Cause um, the recipe is so simple that I use. It's just a, a thing of sour cream, a thing of cream cheese, a soup packet, some chops, some frozen chopped spinach, and then I'm gonna use some uh, artichokes that I got from Trader Joe's. But, I really feel like this, um, this, the Tabitha Brown caramelized onion cream cheese might go really good in this. So I'm actually going to use half a half of this and half regular. I really need to hurry up because the time is eight o'clock. I can't eat after midnight. So I'm really, I'm actually don't have appetite. I'm, my nerves is more all over the place than anything, so. But I know I need to eat because I'll end up getting hungry at 12.01 and then be mad that I can't eat nothing. But yeah, I'm, I'm trying to get myself together. I'm trying. I'm going to make some cabbage, some mashed potatoes, because I like cabbage and mashed potatoes together. It's... Um, so I just made some mashed potatoes and my cabbage. I added some uh, red pepper and bell pepper because they were going bad. So I just threw them into my cookbook. The recipe I use is from this cookbook. It's called Vegan Soul Food. 
and you can screenshot the recipe if you like but fry cabbage that's the recipe so it reminds me of my grandmother's cabbage minus the meat so i'm actually not eating that for dinner that's for tomorrow or the rest of the week but i'm just making myself a spinach artichoke sandwich and some fresh hand cut fries so it is 11 13. i got a good 40 roughly 45 minutes before um 45 minutes before uh, i can no longer eat or drink anything so um I am just putting dishes away. Then I'm gonna make myself some tea, like a good sleepy tea, so that I can get some rest tonight, hopefully. So, I'm going to try to have a good night's sleep. I'm gonna try to go to bed at a decent hour. And, uh, We'll catch back up in the morning. Good night. Oh, the alarm just went off. I feel like I got the littlest bit of sleep. Well, I got about four hours of sleep. It took me a while to fall asleep. Right now, I feel okay. Well, I'm just waking up, so I really don't know how I feel. But a little nervous, of course. But I feel I feel okay. I think so. I don't know. We'll see. Well, let me get up and get dressed. Let me get myself together so we can get out of here. I think I'm going. I just want me. How y'all doing? Good. How are you? I just at least need to see where I'm going first. So you can know where I'm going to be. Good morning. Good morning. I'm well. How are you? Good. So I like he did his field this for me. What it is is a consent form that you give the doctor permission, give updates to your family, and they'll be responsible to take you home. Initial here, sign, date, time, write the word self, S-E-L-F here. Up top is about you, bottom part is about the driver, okay? Okay. Who do you have here with you today? My son. Hey, my son. Uh, <laughs> how you doing? <laughs> so I know your mom said you her mm -hmm. son, yep. but I think you might be her brother. <laughs> son and dad. You don't look like you, she older, she don't look like she old enough to have a child. That's not true. Well, uh, you saying. trying to say I look old? <laughs> uh, what case you want me to help? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I guess. So I'm saying your mom look like she could be your girlfriend, you know, because she oh. looks good, okay? <laughs> not close, Thanks. but yeah, I get it. Oh, gosh. Yeah, I'm sure people think oh, that. she could be your sister. Mm -mm. I think people think mm -mm. that. That's my mother. Okay. She could be. Could, I look young. Nah. I look she, young. She do. I'm sure you're not sure the way you sit there talking. <laughs> How many do you have? Three. All right. Just got in my little room. About to change. They said I got to go to radiology first. My surgery is in, it's 9 o'clock now. My surgery is at 11.15, so um, I'm just about to change real quick and then we'll see what happens. I'm just trying to get my pants off. That's it. Let me get a quick set of butterflies on you. Okay. Um, have you ever had any lump knots removed from either side, bro? Mm -mm. And what procedure are they going through today? Uh, lumpectomy. On Okay, I am 
I'm so overwhelmed right now because this is why I wanted to talk to my doctor beforehand because I don't feel like I know what's going on. And then I get here and they tell me like, oh, well, you're going to go to radiology and you're going to get a, a wire put in. So now it's like I'm getting a, it's almost like similar to getting a biopsy. So they're going to numb me, stick a needle in there, put a wire in, then I got to go to mammogram and then I'm going to have my surgery. I'm like, because they changed the consent form from what I originally had. So it was like, you changed the type of procedure that you're doing on me and nobody told me. I just feel so overwhelmed. It's like, I just feel so overwhelmed. I'm just really struggling right now. I'm trying to keep it together, but I'm like, what's going on? What's happening? What are y'all about to do? But I just had, she just did a ultrasound. So I'm waiting for them to come stick me with a needle and numb up my breasts and put a wire in. I don't like not knowing what's going on. So that's what's driving me crazy. I just, I feel like I don't know. I'm not well informed. This is making it more annoying. Mm. I'm not enjoying this. You look lit. I'm not enjoying it at all. Oh. I just want it to be over with. Especially because I got a headache. Mm. My eyes look like. <laughs> a little bit. That's the IB kicking in. You do or no? I don't like feeling out of control. Thank you. 
consent for left needle localization, excisional breast biopsy, signed today, 1.30. Um, she has a scope patch. She got Pepsi Tio and two of her set. Sounds good. Uh, Alright, let's see. Do you have squeeze yeah, in there? Yeah, do you want to squeeze in there? No, it's okay, it's okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Here, give a drive-by. A, yeah. a drive-by kiss. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you too. Take your care of her. Okay. Um, That's pretty quick. That was almost just like a half an hour. Yeah, about a half an hour. Okay. Nice. They say 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 they it's really fun. Oh, my God. You know, it's pretty crazy how you can, they can put you to sleep like that. And you don't remember nothing. It's like, I don't even remember when I closed my eyes. They had the oxygen thingy on me and I was breathing. And the next thing I know, here, I'm in here. Mm-hmm, that's weird. Hopefully I'm not in a lot of pain because I'm numb right now, so I don't feel anything, but, you know. What you been doing while I was... Did you go back to your car? Yeah, I just sat within us for a little bit. Oh. Then they gave me a call. Oh, did they? Mm -hmm. Sit back now. All I remember is that we didn't get through my IV. I got in there. It did it. I was making it itchy. Mm. Like my arms itching and stuff. Anything fall out? Uh uh. But they had me strapped down. My arms out. Over here, are you okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you tell me when you want to go, and we're ready now, or you want to wait a little bit. <coughs> I'm ready. Ready? Okay, I'll take everything off you. Back home. Let me see. I'm so tired. I'm hungry too. Let me check on my boob and see what's going on down here. So, 
Let me cover up the nip. So I have an incision right there. I wonder how long I gotta leave this tachyderm on. That's a lot of blood up underneath there. Let's take a feel. No more lump. It's gone. Woohoo! So if they originally was like um, no jewelry, and is it metal? I said no, it's not metal. She was like, well, they like you to have on no jewelry. So I was like, well, you gotta cut them off because I can't just take them off. But my waist beads made it. Yay! Man, I feel like I can sleep until tomorrow. I gotta eat something. It's a good thing. See, it's a good thing I prepped some stuff. Because, um, I'm sure about to get something to eat. I don't know if I was recording when I was talking to the doctor, but I asked her about the other lump. And, uh, it's so small that she was just saying if it needed to come. I really wanted to get that out, but it's teeny tiny. If, um, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. They, they think that one is still a fibroadenoma, but I don't know. I'm about to go make myself something to eat. You know, I think the biggest thing for me is, um, I just don't feel like they explain stuff. Now, I know I was a little groggy going in and out, and I read over the discharge paperwork, but um, it's like, go over the discharge instructions. with Maybe they went over it with my son, and maybe not me, but I wanted you to go over it with me, too. So, I don't know. I just, I just didn't feel, feel comfortable. I just felt like I completely didn't know what was going on the whole time, and yeah. I will check back in with y'all a little later. I also forgot to mention that, um, let me take these off. I need a break. I'm not in any pain. For the most part, I'm just tired from the anesthesia, but, um, um, I'm still numb, so I don't really feel anything. I know what I don't feel is that doggone lump in my breast. See, I forgot to ask her. I wanted her to take a picture of it because I was curious to see what it looked like. But I forgot. I don't know. I was just so overwhelmed. Everything about that was just so overwhelming. Like, from trying to get the IVs. So, like, at one point, I don't know if I captured that on video. At one point, I got the girl. See, I have very small veins, and they roll. So, I'm a hard stick. So when the girl was trying on my arm, she over here trying, you know, tourniquet tight as hell. You know, she trying to get a vein. Other nurse is on the computer asking me questions. And then anesthesia man just burst, bust up in the room and just start talking. And I'm like, wait, I, I'm like, I can't focus on all of this stuff at once. He trying to come in and ask me questions. And he's like, oh, 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 sorry to the nurse. I'm like, that was just rude. Um, which I didn't even see him. It was a, a woman behind me. Uh, I felt like doing anesthesia stuff, but anyhow. Yeah, so it was just like so much. So she over here trying to get a vein. That's hurting. She messed up. And then the other lady tried to go on this side. And she, the, the thing I hate when I people try to stick me, get blood or get IVs, is they want to go fishing in my veins. And I'm... Do not fish. If you don't have a clear stick, don't be in there trying to move it around until you hit a vein. Like, I can't. I, I hate that. 
And that's what she was doing on this wrist. So she was fishing a little bit, jamming it up in there. And I'm just like, oh my gosh. And then she she thought she had it in there, hooked it up in my arm. It was just hurting. I was like, yeah, that fluid is not going in my vein. So it was just like a lot. That's what my point is. It was just so much going on. I'm like, I don't want, I'm sick of getting stuck. Um, so then the third lady, three, this was nurse number three came in and she was great. She got it. No problem. But oh my goodness. So it was like that. Just, you know, it just really overwhelmed me. Just had me like, I'm trying to breathe. Like tell myself to relax and calm down. But yeah, it was like, okay, you're going to radiology. And I'm like, what more radiology for? Oh, they're gonna, it's kind of like a biopsy. You're gonna stick a needle in and then put a wire in there. And I'm like, huh? Come in? They gonna do what? So, yeah. But yeah. And then my doctor came in. You know, it's like doctors. Like, I, I want a doc, you know, she's a surgeon. But, you know, you want your doctor to feel like I'm not just like a patient, a number. Maybe I'm just asking for too much. But I just feel like in healthcare, it's just, I think the thing is, is like, what they don't realize, and this is what I took to consideration when I was a nurse, you know, because I know after a while you 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 lose any type of sympathy. It just seemed like they just be so like business. It's like y'all do this every day, but you got to keep in mind that your patient don't have to deal with this every day. So when y'all come in there like rattling off questions and you know, not really listening, it just be like I oh, don't, I don't know. My nose is so itchy. But yeah, it was just, my nose was acting up. My nose feels so dry. And then that wire in my boob itched like crazy. It took them a long time from when I got the wire placed to when I had surgery. Because I, I guess my doctor got behind. So I'm just sitting there like, oh my gosh, I want to yank this thing out because it was just so itchy. You know, I couldn't really show y'all. I wanted to show y'all, but they had a bandage over it. But when I, um, it was literally about this much of a wire just sticking out. So it was just like sticking out of my boob like that. And it was so itchy. And then when I got back to, um, the, sur uh, the surgery room, whatever she put in my IV to take me under, that had my arm itching like crazy. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm itching. Benadryl me or something, but I don't know. I was out, but all right. I, I'm just rambling at this point, but I'll update y'all later. So I'm still tired. It's much later, not much later. It's like seven o'clock. Um, I've been eating, child. So I just I just went over and read the papers again. See, I was so like out of it. So I don't remember them verbally going over any instructions with me, but there's a paper and I see my son signed it. So they must've told him, which is like, you know, you know how that is. <clears throat> but I know she mentioned something about ice. My doctor did. It ain't nothing about ice on the, on the, on the sheet. And then I'm supposed to be, I say wear a sports ball 24 seven. Child, these things is just hanging free at the moment. I ain't even put, I was so tired. I, when I got here, I couldn't do anything. Like I just had to lay down. Putting on a sports bra was not an option. So I'm about to actually do that right now. Can I get this doctor's initials off of me? I'm about to do that right now. Let me make sure it don't look no bloodier. I don't. I'm still numb actually, so real numb. I haven't had to take any um, pain meds yet because I'm super numb still. Oh, my nose. I don't know. I just feel like I was just so itchy in there. My nose was itchy. If you, so if you could tell in one of the clips, my nose was red. Like I just, like my allergies was going haywire for some reason. They already bad enough as is, which is why I'm always rubbing my, my nose always be itchy. It's just itchy. Itchy, sneezy, itchy. Um, But it's like, 
it was it was like extra itchy today in there. I don't know what it was. I don't know. Maybe it had to do with all of the itching that I was having too from those that wire and then that other med that they gave me that had my arm itchy and on fire. Mm. But um yeah, I wonder what I wonder what this um this scar is gonna look like because it's like I tried to show y'all. Let me show y'all what I was flashing. So it's like right there. Like what is, ooh that's so, it's so numb. It's so numb. But it's like that numbness that is almost coming back to life numb. So it feels a little weird. But uh, I just wonder what this is gonna look like as a scar. The biopsy, ooh. Okay, I felt a little something there. Okay, let me go put a sports bra on so that when this do, numbness do come off, these boys is immobilized and I ain't gonna be flopping around. I mean, I ain't got a, got much to flop around, but I don't want no issues. So we'll see. Just fingers crossed that the lab, it comes back to be just a fibroadenoma. Cause what they were concerned about is the fact that it was growing. Fibroadenomas at my age is less common it's not uncommon it's just less common it usually happens to women in their 20s earlier in their life so the fact that i developed one at a later age and then the fact that it grew so much in a year um was a little bit concerning get my bruised up wrist i look like a i look like a junkie <laughs> uh, that one was the one this one still sore uh what was i saying yeah, so the fact that mine uh, grew and basically doubled in size in a year was a little concerning. They did tell me that, you know, when you biopsy one part of the mass, you know, it can come at, come back as, as, you know, what it did, a fibroadenoma. But there could be other parts of it that, you know, could be something else. So when they take it out, they can look at the whole thing and, you know, just make sure that it was completely, the whole thing was just a fibroadenoma so um yeah i'm just i'm really happy that i can touch my boob and i don't feel that because i hated it i hated it with a passion it was it felt so disgusting to me when i would lay on my stomach you know if i'm laying on, on my stomach and I, I could feel it when i wash up i could feel it like i hated it i hate that feeling it felt so gross to me so i'm Super happy that it came out without issue. The surgery went well. I'm just, you know, recovering. So it's probably the only update I have for you guys tonight. We'll talk tomorrow. We'll see what my pain level is like. Um, the only limitations I have is I can't lift anything heavy. Yeah, so I will we'll reconvene tomorrow. See what my pain level is like see how I'm feeling like I, I really just want to get back in the bed and go to sleep like this is I tell you what though this is some good ass sleep this is some good quality sleep Ooh, I feel like I'm making enough for any sleep that I have been lacking in the past because this sleep feels great <laughs> all right see you all tomorrow okay it's um the next day day two post up um Oh, um, last night, I, uh, get it together, my throat is so dry, last night, um, like I, I don't know, I, okay, get it together, last night, the numbness started to wear off, so I started to feel a little bit of pain, it was like, s about 75% still numb, um, so I just went ahead and took a half of a pain pill, I can't, I can't take a full pink pill and I hate pink pills anyhow they just make me feel weird I don't like it but um took a half a pink pill so that I wouldn't be pain you know be in pain you know wake up in the middle of the night in pain um so now it actually really doesn't hurt if I move a certain way it, it feels uncomfortable um so it's not too bad unknown but no pain medicine um, I'll give the pain like a 3 3 out of 10 but I can take a shower so I'm about to take a shower and 
going about my day. I wonder if they're going to call me back about the, like, the pathology of the tumor. I'm very displeased with how this all went about. Very, very displeased. Oh, it's my alarm clock. I'm already up. I don't know. I just feel some type of way about the whole situation. Stop I'm trying to. I'm trying to press on my boob as much as I can just to feel, just to make sure I can't feel the lump anymore. Just, oh my gosh, I hated that. I feel like, because my nose was so irritated yesterday, and just like on this side. You know, it felt like how I feel after you get a COVID test. You know, I've been up there and I just feel like real irritated, but. I didn't get a COVID test while I was awake at least. So I'm like, did they put something in my nose? Cause this side is still a little bit, but it was just so irritating. Like, oof, it's still, it's still, I'm real dry right now though. Throat is dry, my nose is dry. So I sound like a boy or something. Um, so I need to get up and drink some fluids. Oh my goodness. I feel a little bit, I probably look it too. I feel a little bit like groggy still. I did get up to go use the bathroom. Oh my gosh, I felt so heavy. Like, I don't know how to describe it any other way than my body felt really heavy. So I was walking like, whoa, this feels weird. I don't know. But I'm about to get up in the shower, see how this works out. I don't want to feel too tired because yesterday, well, yesterday, I was, you know, still kind of out of it. So when I would try to get up and get myself something in the kitchen, I was like, oh, I'm going to go lay right back down. It just, it was too much. But I'm hoping today, you know, I can get around and, and move better. I don't know that trip to the bathroom. I was just like, oh my gosh, let me get back to my bed. But I'm about to, ouch, I forgot. That's where that IV was. Uh, oof, I'm look at my boob. Let's see what it's looking like. You see how it feels when this wire hit me. Oh. Ooh. I feel so, I feel a little bit dizzy. Um, a little bit like I could throw up. But let me just take a shower to see. Maybe all of that can go away. It is, um, uh post-op day two I guess we can call this take two or just be day one I had surgery yesterday today is it's nighttime now my boob is hurting it just started hurting a little more intensely uh so I took a pain a half of a pain pill and I'm about to go to sleep but um I don't know just a, it's just it's so like if I bend forward hurts Right now it's just, it's just in pain. I wanted to go take a shower before I went to bed. I took one this morning, which it felt great because um, I couldn't take one yesterday, but I took one this morning and it felt great. I would like to take another one now, but I'm just a little too uncomfortable. So I'll just have to take one in the morning. Um, um, but other than that, I was actually really nauseous today, like super nauseous, like all day. And I still felt a little groggy. My body felt real heavy. Like when I would get up to walk, I might, I was getting a little dizzy. Oh, my lips is dry. There's a lot going on. But uh, yeah, I'm about to go to sleep. I, I feel so nauseous. I didn't throw up. I just feel super nauseous. So I'm trying to eat something salty or something. I had some, some peppermint tea. Nothing was really helping. But at least I didn't throw up. I just feel nauseous and was just a little bit dizzy. Um, but yeah, right now I'm just about to get some sleep. Hopefully I can get some sleep. I kind of been sleep off and on today. Cause like I said, I just felt real groggy. I still felt very out of it. Um, but I'm not as groggy now, but it's just the nausea that has taken over and now the pain, you know, I didn't take a pain pill at all today. I took one last night before I went to bed, but I didn't take anything today. Cause I don't like taking pain pills. I don't like the way they make me feel. Um, that's why I will only take them before I go to sleep because I don't want to feel that weird feeling of pain pills. And then I don't want to be um, waking up out my sleep in pain. So that's my logic behind it. So I'm about to go to sleep and hopefully tomorrow when I wake up, I won't be nauseous. 
and I'll feel normal and I'll just, you know, one day at a time. <sighs> Good morning. It is the day of my post-up. So it's been a week and a day. It's Tuesday of the following week after my surgery and I am headed to my doctor's appointment. Um, I actually, the, the healing process hasn't been too bad. It actually hasn't been bad pain-wise, but itching, I have been itching like crazy. I don't know if it's the dressing, which is just a tegaderm, and a tegaderm is just one of those clear, transparent dressings that's over top of the um, steri strips, which underneath the steri strips, she said they are dissolvable sutures. So, um, I've never had issues with tegaderm before, so I kind of peeled it back a little bit just to give myself some areas to scratch. I didn't take it all the way off of where the sutures were, but around the surrounding skin. However, it has been very, very itchy. And it's almost almost reminiscent of the itchiness that I felt when I had that wire sticking out of my boob. So I don't know. We'll talk about all of that. The more, the more I've had time to think about how everything transpired with my surgery, um, the more I want to talk to my doctor and ask her about why was the procedure changed without my knowledge and why wasn't I informed of what this process was, this new process was going to look like. So I have some questions for my doctor, so we'll see. I'm really, I don't know. I feel like she's going to be evasive, but yeah, let's just head to this doctor's appointment and see what she has to say. Hey, how um, you doing? Good, how are you? I'm good, have a seat. Everything looks good, it was just a nice little fiber and right Nothing more complicated than that. Anything else going on? Feeling different? Bothering you? Itching. Well, good. yeah, I bet. Once you got another eye, that thing starts to itch. It's good, but then it drives people crazy. Yeah, I had to move the dressing down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine. That's fine. A lot of people do that. Not that big a deal. But now it's going to come off. change from what you were originally going to do because I noticed I signed a different consent form and what I went in there to get was like totally different than what we talked about as far as the wire sticking out of my boob and all of that stuff. You mean why did you get a wire? Yeah really? we, didn't, we didn't talk about I mean because so why was the consent forms different because I signed one consent form when I came here to have my consultation and then when I got there it was like oh it's a, they tried to explain to me what the procedure was I'm like why am I signing I'm not sure why you signed a consent form we almost always put a wire in so I must always localize it almost every single time because the nodule's not very big and we just want to, we only want to go in and take out the nodule. Okay. So we always want it localized. Okay, because when, when we had the consultation, you talked about the, the incision being around my nipple and then there, I was like, oh, why is it over there? Because it was too far over. There was no way we could have gone around the nipple here. It was okay. way too far over here on the side. Okay. But it's in the curve of your breast, so it should, you know, heal into the normal contour of your breast okay and um the, it might feel a little divity there right now but that should usually pop back out over the next three to six months because it was just a fiber adenoma okay so it should really ease into the thing of your breast okay i i have you listed in my computer after our consultation as being a wire localization excisional biopsy i'm not sure why that's a misunderstanding okay so i i clearly knew that and that's how i sent it to my scheduler and it it would never have been the only time they don't put wires in is when they're huge things sitting right underneath the skin. Yeah. That's the only time. Okay. Otherwise, what happens is if we don't put those wires in when they're smaller like that, additional tissue ends up coming out because you're trying to find it. Mm -hmm. When the wire guides you right to it, the only thing that comes out is the little ball of the mask, okay. and it reduces the amount of extra tissue that has to come out. Okay. 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 So this is your copy of the pathology results. You don't need any type of um, other imaging until your annual mammogram is due in November. Mm -hmm. Wait, I'm sorry, what did you say, Neosporin? 
Neosporin, just once a day. I just a now. little sliver. Okay. You know, just a just a hair on there once a day for the next week or two. It helps to heal up a little bit quicker. Okay. Um, when you're um, showering and stuff, just wipe it off. You know, gently, just to make sure that it's nice and dry and it stays dry. Okay. Um, and then otherwise, here's your checkout sheet. You're good to go. Okay. All right, you're good to go. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I don't think she uh, expected me to ask. Well, of course, she didn't expect me to ask those questions, but I don't know. I, it's something about her energy. I don't know. I don't know. It was just like, oh, I would have never said that. Oh, I would have never done that. Oh, I would have. But you did. And I know what I signed. I know we didn't talk about a wire at all. Maybe I'm, may, okay. Now, my memory is not the greatest. So I'm going to go back and look at the footage to see what we talked about as far as taking it out. Because I swear I don't remember anything talked about a wire being put in. I don't recall that at all. But I know for a fact that she talked about putting an incision around the nipple. Now, all of a sudden, it's like, oh, well, it's too far. I never would have been able to. But you said that, ma'am. You said that. That's what you said. So, well, you know, it's just an outpatient surgery. You do briefly go to sleep for it. We do it in the outpatient surgery center over at Northside the Women's Center. This is a breast surgery room that we do it in. You come into the operating you briefly go to sleep. It's pretty mobile. I mean, I know it's way over here, but I feel like I can probably get it out through an incision along your aerial or border so I don't have to make an incision down here. So if I, if I do it here, I usually it'll fade back in over time. So I would just make an incision like right along here, right when you go to sleep, take it out. And the surgery's maybe 15 to 20 minutes. Fall asleep and then close you back up with stitches that melt away over underneath the skin. Dropping in real quick just to kind of talk through some things that you guys saw. So you saw me have that moment at the hospital where I kind of freaked out. And the reason for my freak out and me feeling like I wasn't well informed is because I was absolutely not well informed. I had been trying to call my doctor prior to my appointment just to have, because I had questions following up with the MRI and then questions about the surgery. No one called me back. I get there, I'm presented with a new consent form that has a different title of the procedure. I asked the nurse, hey, what's that? Like, what's different from what it said before to what it says now, what is this? They tried to explain about, oh, you're gonna go to radiology, you're gonna get a wire put in. And immediately I'm like anxious because like, what do you mean I'm gonna get a wire put in my, but what does that look like? What, nobody explained that to me. That was never explained. As you saw when I did the flashback to my consultation, my doctor expressed that the surgery will be quick. We'll go in, we'll do this. I'll put the, I can put the incision around your areola, even though the tumor is a little far to the left, but it moves, I should be able to get it out this way. No mention of a wire, no mention of having to go to radiology prior to the procedure, none of that. It was gonna, it sounded like, hey, you gonna come in, we gonna cut you open, get the lump out, you're gonna go home. That's what I was expecting when I got there. So to get there and to find out something different, it really made anxiety through the roof. So I was just kind of freaking out because I was not mentally prepared for that extra layer to my procedure. And then I felt like my doctor played in my face when I got to the post-op appointment because it was just like, and I know you all can't see her face because you're looking at the back of her, but like I'm real big on like energies and looking people in their eyes. You know, you can kind of like gauge, you know, the trustworthiness of the person. So for her to just like look me in the face, I'm like, oh, I would never say that. Or, oh, I, I could have never have done that. It was almost like, are you, so you trying to tell me that you didn't, are you trying to convince me that you didn't say that? Because you did. Um, and then to say like, I don't know why, you know, they would have wrote for, you know, that on your consultation, I mean, on your consent form, because I almost always do it as a wire, whatever the technical name is for the procedure. So it's like, if you always do that, nine let's say nine times out of ten of your lumpectomies in this manner why wouldn't you have explained that to me you said you went back to your computer and you put it in as such but you never ex so let's just say she did let's just say that's how she always did it she went back to her computer she documented that this was the procedure that i was supposed to get you should have explained that to your patient 
because you didn't paint the full picture of what the procedure looked like and that's the problem that I have you told me one thing and then I got there and it was something different and the incision where you because again this is my body that you're cutting on I need to know what you're doing and what this looks like this is why I, it's very important for you to be an advocate for your health. Ask questions, make them explain it to you, make them explain it to you until you understand. If it, it, I know doctors always seem to be busy, 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 and sometimes they'll cut you off and you know you don't really feel like you're being heard. Make yourself be heard. That is very important. If I can give you any tips or any tidbits about health care and your health is to be an advocate for yourself and make sure you are aware of what your treatment plan is what a procedure is looking like, what a surgery is going to look like, what the outcome is, all of that. You should be well informed. And that was the problem that I had with my procedure is I was not well informed. So that's why I just had some problems with the procedure and that's why I felt some type of way. But all in all, I made it out alive. Okay, I'm back home. I want to look at my, um, I want to look at my, incision because I was trying to look at it there. I do not like the way that this looks. Mm. So itchy. Put this down. Like it. I don't know. It just to me it looks like it's going to be an ugly scar but we'll see. It was very lumpy. She pulled the skin very tight when she closed. Oh, I don't know. She's like, oh, it's right in the crease. And she's trying to convince me, you know, that it's going to, you all heard. She was trying to convince me that it's not going to, that it's going to heal well. I mean, we'll see. It might heal up pretty good and it might not be so noticeable, but. We shall see. I don't know. In any event, the main thing is I'm not going to dwell on the aesthetics, even though, you know, we care about our appearance and how we look. But the main thing is that I don't have cancer. The tumor is gone. I won't be in any more pain. I won't have to feel it. I'm good. So I am thankful for that. And I am thankful that this is all over and I don't have to deal with this anymore. So we're just going to end on a happy note. Thank you, God. Amen.